Okay, here, here we go with the second one of their view for exam number two. So let me put the heading up there. Exam number two. Obviously, we're in Math 105. This is exam two. This is review, exam two review, and we're up to B. And maybe let's just put the semester two. Okay, so we're up to problem number five. Problem number five is the the what we need to take care of now. Starting off our second video for exam two. Okay, so here's the question. The question will be, what is the distance between, make up some uh, letters for what we're going to call our points. All right, let's take between uh, Q, which is negative 1, 3, and uh, N, which is 6, comma, negative 2. Okay, so the distance, it says distance. What's the distance between these two points? Obviously, this is a point, and obviously, this is a point. So we, they want the distance. So that means we we're, we're have to remember, you have to remember by heart, the distance formula, which is like the Pythagorean theorem. The distance formula is square root of y2 minus y1, in parentheses, y2 minus y1, parentheses squared, plus x2 minus x1, parentheses squared. That should extend all the way to the end. That is the formula. That's what we need to remember. Then go up to the points that were given to us. x1, call 1, x1, y1, not x1, y2, x1, y1. The other one, x2, y2, and then follow the formula. Okay, square root of y2, you look it up, it says negative 2, put it in parentheses, minus is part of the formula, doesn't, can't go anywhere, y1 is 3, close the parentheses, squared, plus, open parentheses, look up x2, it says 6, minus is part of the formula, look up x1, it says negative 1, I'm going to put it down in parentheses, and then close the parentheses, and then squared. Okay, so that equals... I'll just go down vertical, I guess. Square root of minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5. Right? I'm not really skipping any steps. Steps. I might skip a step here and there, but not for the moment. Negative 5 squared. 6 minus minus 1 is going to be 7. I don't even need the parentheses, but it's there anyway. 7 squared. Okay. Equals the square root of 25 plus 49. Negative 5 squared is 25, 7 squared is 49, equals the square root of 74. And go figure, that's not going to be able, there's no perfect square, there's a multiple of 74. I have a factor of 74, 2 times, um, two times 37 is 74, but that doesn't help us. So here's our final answer, we're done. There we go, that's problem number five. Okay, so I think I'm going to take a fresh piece of paper for number six. Here we go. Problem number six. Uh, can we get up there? Let me close this thing uh, right here. Um, let's see if it works. Okay, there we go. Close that. There we go. Open up again. There we go. Okay, problem number six, fresh piece of paper. Fresh piece of paper. Problem number six. Okay, now I gotta draw a graph. I'm not good at drawing graphs. However, we're gonna try. This is what it's gonna look like. I think, you know, I think I'll get the message across even though I draw lousy graphs. Y-axis, X-axis. Okay, here we go. Here's going to be 1. I'm going to make them pretty big. 1 and 2. So this is 2. I'll indicate that even. I don't have to draw everything. They'll do, give you much better graphs, much clearer graphs than I do. 
Okay, here's another thing I want to tell you about this graph. I want to I want to talk I want to go up um, four one two three four. So this is going to be four up there. Down I want to go down three one two and three. That's going to be negative three. And I want to go backwards on the x-axis one and two. So this is going to be negative two. So I've labeled the main points. Okay, now at this point over here, right over here. I up above the negative two and across from the four, I have an empty circle there. At this point over here, down down from the two, below the two, and across from the negative three, I have a full circle. That's what I'm trying to do. And then the graph winds its way up there, basically, and then stops. That's my graph. Okay, not too good, but not terrible. Now, they'll have, it'll be relatively clear that, and very, very probably, that the answer they'll want over here is, they want it, they want it in interval notation, which we talked about, and I'll be showing you again with this problem. Interval notation. That's how they want the answer. And what do they want? They want the domain. They want the domain. And they want the range. All right, so we've talked about all these issues. Fine. So here we go as, uh, as follows for this particular problem. The domain. The domain is the x's, right? All the x's. So how this graph is not that big. As far as the x-axis is concerned, it goes from negative 2, right, going left, from left to right, negative 2, and it ends at 2. It goes from negative 2 and ends at 2, comma, 2. Now, what do I put on the, to the left of this negative 2? Do I put a bracket or a parenthesis? Answer, since it's empty, I put a parenthesis. What about next to the 2 on the right-hand side? Bracket or parenthesis? Answer, this is filled in. Therefore, it's a bracket. That's interval notation. Hopefully, that reminds you. It looks familiar. Interval notation. And that's how we, and we describe the domain. What about the range? Range is up and down, the y-axis, up and down. Let's start from the below to bottom, from bottom to top. Well, it ranges from, right, no pun intended, from negative 3. That's where the bottom of it is. And how far does it go up here? That's supposed to be a 4. Let me remind you that that's a 4. So it goes up to 4 and stops. Doesn't go any further. Now, is the the bottom over here negative three? Is that included? Yes, it's filled in. Put a bracket on top by the four. Is that filled? Is that included? No. So therefore, put a parenthesis. There's the domain and range in interval notation, and that's the end of this problem. That that's what they wanted: domain and range in interval notation. And they show you the graph, much nicer graph than mine. Okay, let's go to problem number seven. What if they give you, I'm going to cordon this off as I usually do, so it's easy to follow um, the problems without them flowing into each other. All right, here. What about if the given is f of x equals 3x squared minus 1? And that's your given. Here comes your question. Here comes the question. What is f of 4x? That's the question. That means you fill in wherever you see x. If there are a bunch of x's, you would fill in every single time. You would say x. You would put 4x in there. All right, we only have it once. So all you got to do to get this answer going is write, instead of x, write 4x. Close the parentheses. Put it all in, put that 4x in parentheses. Replace x with 4x in parentheses. Leave the 3 alone. Leave the square alone. Leave the minus alone. And leave the, minus, the 1 alone. And then let's work this out. What is, so uh, PEMDAS comes up again. You got to do an exponent first. Don't do this multiplication first. Do the, do the um, exponent first, PEMDAS. What's 4x squared? 4x times, the 4x in parentheses squared is 4x times 4x. 4 times 4 is 16, and x times x is x squared. So instead of 4x in parentheses, I put 16x squared in parentheses, and this is gone. Forget that. This, this operated on the 4. And this operated on the x, right? The the exponent on the upper right corner, upper right hand corner, upper parentheses means it it's it's working on all the members of the parentheses. It's working on the four, four squared is sixteen, and it's working on the x, x squared. 
Now that's gone. What's left standing? Minus and one, which we can't ignore. Okay. I ran out of room, so I'm going to have to put it below here. Now we have a multiplication and, and, uh, and a subtraction. PEMDAS says do the multiplication. 3 times 16x x squared is 48x squared minus 1. Nothing else we can do about this problem. And that's it. That's what we offer. We've cleaned it up, simplified it. That's the best we can do. 48x squared minus 1. Problem over. Okay. We still have some time. Let's go to problem number um, number eight. Okay, so again, I need to get up there, close this, say no, and get myself another piece of paper. Here we go. All right, so now problem number eight, we said. Here we go with problem number eight. Okay. Well, the, what if it says on your paper, if you see this, x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4. And it's going to be clear that they, that they want, they're going to, they're going to ask you three questions. Hopefully this looks familiar to you. It's a standard form of, of the equation of a circle. And they want three questions answered. They want A, they want what is R, B, they want this the coordinates of the center, the coordinates of the center. And here it is. It's going to be parentheses with a comma in between, right? So that's what we're, that's what we're going to do. The coordinates of the center. Okay, let's go to and then C. They want to, they're going to want you to graph the circle. Graph the circle. I want you to graph it. All right. So now, as far as as far as uh, R is concerned, here's scrap paper. This we know in the in, in, as far as the um, the function, this uh, standard of uh, standard of uh, function of the circle, standard form of the of the equation of a circle. This is R squared. So R squared is equal to four. What is R? Take the square root of both sides. R is equal to two. A is done. R is equal to 2. We're done with A. Okay, let me circle it. Problem over. As far as the coordinates of the circle is concerned, the X coordinate will be the opposite of this, which is negative 3. And the Y coordinate will be the opposite of this, which is positive 2. And therefore, we've got the coordinates of the circle. B is done. Now it's a question of graphing. All right, that's where I don't do so well. But here we go. What are the coordinates of the of the center? Put get let's get the center straight. Negative three comma two, right? All right. So there's a y axis, x axis. Negative three. Go back to the left. Negative three. One, two, three. Go up. One, two. Here's the center, right? That's the center. But I need to draw the whole thing. What's my radius? It's going to be two. So the center is going to be around. It's going to be over here by two to the two to the right, two to the left. Right, let's see. It'll be two to the left. It'll be two upwards, and it'll be two downwards. So it's going to be looking like this, basically. I mean, mine. It has not come out looking uh, beautiful. Okay, so now I just want to tell you, and Alex, you, what you do is you s click on the circle icon when you're trying to draw it. Click on the circle icon in Alex. The, cir the circle icon, right, in Alex. And that's the and so to draw the circle. When you want to try to draw the circle, click on that and place the center point, place the center point um, and click on it. Go to the center point, right? Go to the, go to the center point. Now there's the coordinates of this center, center point and click a point and then click it and then you um the once you do that the you'll uh you you you, you follow instructions you follow instructions and you will they'll tell you to put the to to pick a point on the peripheral somewhere on the peripheral the other point on the peripheral and then the alex will draw click on it 
and Alex will draw the circle for you. All right, we've got to stop this uh, video right now. Okay, there we go.